Hello, I'm Donald Leggett, and welcome to the latest London Southeast CEO interview. We're joined by Damon Hancock, CEO at Spectrum X, who is soon to IPO in a standard listing on the London Stock Exchange. Spectrum X specialises in the commercialisation of the mildly acidic hypochlorous acid in the healthcare and pharmaceutical markets. Welcome, Damien. It's great to have this opportunity to speak to you. Thank you very much for having me, Donald. So presumably this is the, this is the, the realisation of an awful lot of hard work on, on your team's behalf. Absolutely, yes. We've been working very hard over the, over the past year or so on uh, bringing this unique product to market. Uh, and we're very, very excited with the recent um, testing results we've had in vitro regarding our unique nebulization treatment for COVID-19. Great. So a truly, Spectrum, a truly interesting company. And presumably you spent a lot of, you have spent a lot of that last year explaining the company to city investors. In short, how do you explain the business? Uh, so what, what we have is a license for a truly unique formulation of hypochlorous acid. Hypochlorous acid is a chemical compound which is produced within the body uh, by our white blood cells to fight off uh, bacteria, other pathogens, and essentially is the reason that human beings are still alive today. But if it's, if it's already available, what's the big deal? Uh, so what we have is a unique patentable formulation of the, of the product. So in the same way that water, for example, cannot be patented because it's naturally occurring, uh, hypochlorous acid historically has not been able to be patented. Uh, what we've done with our partners in the United States is create a stabilized formulation uh, with additional additives and stabilizers which means that we are able to have a patented, protectable, uh, commercializable formulation of, of the chemical. Okay, so it's all about the patent. And where are you in terms of, of that patent? Uh, so we have now applied for a, a provisional patent in the United States, and we are at the, in the process of um, converting that into a utility patent uh, currently. Okay, and what are the early uses that you're planning for a hypochlorous acid? So HSCL is actually the most potent um, sterilization tool available to mankind. So there are multiple uses for the product. We are focusing on the application in the pharmaceutical um, sterilization and cosmetic industries. So two, two different, uh, two different uh, streams there, revenue streams. Absolutely, yes. Okay, so let's take pharmaceutical uses and the total market for those products first. If you could explain what you could do in pharma terms and total market. Okay, so yeah, so our first product launch is gonna be our SPZ069, which is our nebulized uh, inhalable treatment for respiratory infection. Uh, currently, we are obviously uh, implementing that with COVID-19, but the product will actually be effective against all bacterial and viral infections. So pneumonia, bronchitis, um, influenza, common cold, the product is effective across a broad spectrum of infections. And even superbugs, I was reading. Absolutely, yes. So antibiotics are sort of a, de a declining sector of, of the pharmacy world. Um, and things like MRSA are an inherent risk to patients in hospitals. And HOCL is a positively non-selective uh, action so that means that in the way that, for example, a vaccine will target a, a protein spike on a virus, if that protein spike mutates and moves, that vaccine will no longer be effective. With HSCL, that's not the case. It's a encompassing uh, action. Okay, and if, you're, if your target market today might be COVID-19, it's certainly going to be much broader than that into the future. Um, so what, what might be the, the, you know, the total value of that market that you can aim for? Well, so currently the, in the UK and EU market for respiratory treatment is, is roughly $5 billion. Um, so we would hope to, to target the you know, majority of that market segment uh, with our treatment. And uh, perhaps it's too soon to tell, but what sort of, what sort of re revenue targets might you be setting yourself? How much of that $5 billion might, might you hope to get in your, your, your initial we would, years? We would, hope, we would hope within 24 to 36 months, we would be uh, between $600 and $800 million of that. So significant. Absolutely. Okay. Healthcare uses. So that's, that's pharmaceuticals uh, dealt with. The healthcare uses and the total market there. If you could talk us through uh, those, those uses, please. Uh, yes, absolutely. So we, we, so we currently produce the most powerful hand sanitizer on the planet. 
Uh, it's about four times more effective than than 90% ethanol uh, without any of the side effects such as you know skin irritation. Um, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we we are currently supplying uh, various NHS hospitals with the product. Um, and we intend to roll out this autumn our Say No to Alcohol campaign, which is to eradicate alcohol from schools, starting with the United Kingdom. Um, there is a significant increase in incidences of irritation uh, with children, either by ingestion or with eye irritation um, and various other things, um, children developing eczema, psoriasis, things like this. So we are actively targeting the, the healthcare market for, for education. And what are your, and exactly, what are your plans there? Um, how, do you, how do you plan to rule out that product? Um, so we are actively lobbying the, the UK government to issue an initi initiative to stop having alcohol in the presence of children. Um, we have a product which is more efficacious, safer, and without any of the other side effects which alcohol currently um, depicts on children uh, with um, uh, and the total market there uh european market for for hand sanitizer is about 1.2 billion currently and how much of that would you target uh, for 36 36 uh, yeah, yeah, we're targeting 10 to 12 percent of market penetration okay i've i've i'm familiar with uh, this market and lots of players with non-scientific backgrounds have come charging in and done all sorts of uh, slightly wild west things um, presumably you see your scientific background as a useful differentiator. Talk us through that. Absolutely. I mean, during the pandemic, we saw all sorts of companies um, very valiantly, you know, donating products to hospitals, to schools, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the reality is a, a beer maker or a gin maker producing alcohol hand sanitizer is not the same as a scientist with 30 years experience of developing an antimicrobial substance. And that's, that's your background, 30 years, or your, your partner in the States background? Yeah, absolutely, yes. So yeah, our, our partner in the United States has been studying this, this chemical molecule for, for over 30 years. So I was going to ask this later in the interview, but it's, this is the time. So what's the relationship between yourself and spectrum antimicrobials in the States? Talk us through that one. Um, so essentially antimicrobials act as a re research and development uh, center for, for us as their, as their licensee. So we identify commercialization opportunities. Um, we then relay that to them and they then continually work on developing the, the chemical compounds for the relevant market sectors which we wish to target. So what's the financial relationship between you guys? Who owns who? Uh, so myself and the other founding shareholders have uh, personal shareholdings in, in the American company. Uh, otherwise, we have a commercial relationship between the two companies, which is a royalty payment uh, system based on sales. Okay, that's, a, that's an interesting answer. Um, Okay, um, what are the plans for commercial commercialization, like factories and so on? How far advanced are they? Uh, so we are almost completed uh, developing our first uh, production facility in the northwest of England. From there, we will develop and build a secondary um, pharmaceutical production line. Currently, we have a HSE compliant ISO 9001 facility uh, to produce uh, both the hand sanitizer and our cosmetic products. And you prefer to, to have those facilities in-house rather than uh, do the production under license? Yeah, absolutely, yes. Due to the, the, tra the trade secrets and the IP protection, we, we, we do everything in-house. Ah, okay, there's the, there's the answer to that one. Um, a Spectrum X is planning a standard listing on the London Stock Exchange in mid-Q4. So is that September, is that October or November? What sort of valuation are you looking for and how much might be, you be hoping to raise? Um, so we are, we're planning mid-November mid currently. Um, to date, we have raised 5 million in convertible loan notes out of a um, potential 8 million. Uh, and in terms of valuation, we are looking at conservatively 50 million. Okay, that's a big number. And why a, why a standard listing rather than AIM? Um, just we feel the, the appetite on, and the liquidity is, is better, better suited for us on the, on the main market. Okay, and you've got a, you've, you, you clearly see yourself as a business for the big future. Absolutely. Okay, what are your CapEx plans uh, and what does that money get spent on? 
Um, so we are going to be rolling out uh, additional human trials for other respiratory infections. So we are supporting a clinical trial at the University of Innsbruck in Austria for COVID-19 currently. Uh, we also have a trial agreed with Chelsea and Westminster for all non-COVID respiratory infections this winter. So that will be, that will be starting on the 1st of October, running until the end of February. Uh, so things again like pneumonia, bronchitis, influenza, uh, RSV in children, um, all, all, so basically all non-COVID respiratory infections, which can be treated using our product, will be targeted in that trial. And, and, and presumably it's important to do these medical trials because then you, you find it far easier to convince the medical community. Is that, is that correct? It's an absolute necessity to, yeah, to go through. Um, you have to. Exactly, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So, so following on from phase two trials, uh, in, in Innsbruck we'll be submitting an emergency use authorization application um, to, to bring the product to market. And following on from that, we will then bring additional trials to allow the product to be licensed for use against other uh, respiratory infections. It must be quite unusual to find a product which has so many different um, potential uses, You're a spectrum of uses. Absolutely, yeah. So historically or traditionally, um, drug manufacturers target a specific infection and design a drug or develop a drug for that, um, for that purpose. We are in a unique situation where we more or less have a jack of all trades type situation where we have one product which can actually you know, heal and can benefit patients with various different infections. Okay, so this is a very interesting product. What has institutional VC interest been like and are you thinking of including retail investors in the IPO? Uh, so to date, we've raised money purely from high net wealth individuals. Uh, we've had significant interest from institutional and from VC money. Um, we are very much of the belief that we should include our shareholders in the growth of the business. And therefore, we're very happy with the, with the current model we have. But obviously, at listing, we are, we're open to, to all investor types. And where might Spectrum X be in two years' time? What are the key milestones that investors should be looking at for you in terms of your, your growth and development? Um, so the emergency use authorization, as I mentioned previously, is a, a significant milestone which will allow us to commercialize the, the product uh, in the market. And then additionally, we will be adding uh, other applications in terms of infection control and infection treatment going forward. Okay. So that's about it. Are there any, any questions that you, you wish you had been asked by interviewers but hadn't actually been asked? So this is your opportunity. What would you like to, what would your message to the, to the, the market be? Uh, I would say in doing my, in doing my initial due diligence uh, before partnering with the Spectrum Antimicrobials, I was asked the question, this appears too good to be true. And, and always when something appears to be good, to be too good to be true, it normally is, is not the case. But in this instance, it actually is. Okay, Damon. Damon, uh, uh, Hancock, CEO at Spectrum X, thank you so much for joining us today. That was really very interesting. Uh, don't forget that when Spectrum X float on the London Stock Exchange, they'll have their own chat page with free data on London Southeast. Yes, that's our plug. And to see more interviews like this one, please subscribe to the London Southeast YouTube channel. And you can also follow us on Twitter at London Southeast. As ever, thank you so much for watching.